Good evening. It's the first day of this year. First day of 2021. I think probably by now you've already had your dinner. It's 7.10 or something. So yeah, I, I thought this is a good time to come on live. And I'll tell you about something that shocked me today. I I googled just I don't know what the train of thought was but I googled uh, what was it like uh, what's the number or amount of returned gifts in the United States because hey Danny nice to see you again yeah so I was just thinking about this country because I remember the first years when I came here what uh, what really shocked me was how people return gifts because uh, in the country where I was born in Latvia it was considered very rude nobody would openly return gifts but here I noticed and that shocked me at the beginning when I just uh, started living here that uh, people would actually include uh, receipts and tell where they got the gifts and they would know uh, the the value or the price uh, that it was purchased they uh, purchased for so yeah and then uh, all those uh, TV programs how gifts are being returned and best strategies or whatever you know what they, what they talk about on the news anyways now it's like what eight years later so I don't know what the thought was I googled the number and I didn't get fresh data but I got data from 2018 and at that time it was an estimate uh, by UPS and the number was shocking they said that they es uh, they expected that uh, gifts in the amount of 95 billion dollars would be returned 95 billion dollars I was thinking is it possible it's only UPS gifts are returned in uh, like to the stores any or any other ways plus not everybody returns uh, their gifts so I actually did the math I googled the number of population in the United States which is 331 million according to the data that I looked up so if you divide 95 billion by the number of in uh, on population hi Connie yeah so it's approximately 287 dollars per each person in this country but not each person is returning gifts isn't that shocking it means that all the energy all the money is that is spent on buying gifts and sending gifts and giving gifts they are not actually appreciated the receivers very very uh, many receivers don't need the gifts that are being given that is crazy right Connie uh, I was I was totally stunned so what came into my mind I remembered I, I don't know if you uh, if you've heard about the book five love languages uh, it's how we communicate uh, with our loved ones and uh, they said that there are five five ways of communication and it was um, acts of service that was one and there was gift giving that was one of the love languages then there was quality time together there was physical touch and words of affirmation so gift giving is only one of the languages and for many people that's not even the priority language how they want to express or receive love by the others right so imagine if you were more observant and actually saw the person that who you are giving the gift to and if you understood what their love language is you could make them feel loved and seen and noticed uh, in more effective ways 
right? Like how about just call them up during this COVID time for, the, for those people for whom the priority love language is physical touch. I imagine how difficult it was. My mom uh, used to work in a hospital when she was younger and I always, I will always remember, you know how we remember what our parents have said, just some sentences stuck into our minds and I remember my mother was very compassionate and especially she was compassionate about uh, for uh, old women. I remember that sentence was, and I'm really translating and uh, it wouldn't probably sound uh, the way she actually said it, but she said she always um, felt compassion for those old uh, mothers, grandmothers, um, who have wrinkly skin and who do not look beautiful anymore, but they, and so nobody wants to touch them anymore. And when she went to visit her patients, uh, at that time she always wanted to pat them and or touch those old uh, uh, patients. Of course now in this country it would be inappropriate to touch somebody. So it's a totally different culture and different time but so many people actually long for human touch. And because of the COVID and also because of these cultural restrictions and fears that we have Imagine how many people are unhappy in this country and in the world in general. And what could make them happy sometimes would be just a hug, just human touch. I actually have a friend who, is, um, who has been diagnosed with a terminal illness. So, this friend is, um, as I understand, in a wheelchair. I, um, I don't know for sure, but that's how it sounds. And when I last talked on the phone with this friend, um, he said that the, the one, the biggest regret that he had was that the last time he saw people, including me, he didn't hug us. So, yeah, there are many more efficient ways how we can make this world a happier place for everybody. Um, for me, my love language is, number one, is acts of service. And uh, the love language number two for me is words of aff uh, appreciation or affirmation. And um, I think I know why it is. It is because when I was a child, I watched my parents, how they communicated with each other. And I grew up in a loving family where parents loved each other. And I always saw how my uh, father carried out these acts of service because he was not um, very eloquent. He would, like most men, he was a man of very few words. Alkani, yeah, physical touch, so there you go, yeah. Um, so, yeah, anyway, my, uh, yeah, my father, the one thing I remembered he always did for my mother and for me, and also for my sister, so we were three women in the family. My father would always, um, I would say, brush our shoes, just clean the shoes. And, um, I, and he also bought shoes for my mother because I was, um, I, I lived in the Soviet system, you couldn't, uh, couldn't get uh, beautiful shoes, but he, uh, he was driving a big truck and he would travel to um, other Soviet republics and in some uh, you could get uh, shoes and in some you could get something else and he would just travel long distances. And he always uh, bought shoes for us and for my mother and for us and we always had uh, pretty um, 
legs or feet, pretty looking legs because we had pretty shoes. And he also took care of our shoes and that was the act of service. That was the expression of love. And uh, I really appreciate um, when people take time and help me out with something because I take it as um, communication of love or affection or something like that. And then that is also the language there for how I speak. If I cook dinner or do something, arrange something at home or something, uh, that's actually how I show my love. That's the expression of love and therefore my love language uh, number two is uh, words of appreciation because I want to hear <laughs> that um, my love uh, language is um, received that way. And um, it's sadly that sometimes when we communicate with our partners, their love languages are different. They expect something different. Um, they in order to be loved. And I realize now when I think that um, I could communicate my love better. I We tend to express it the way we want it to receive. But that's not always the right way to communicate your uh, love and appreciation and things like that. So yeah, let's be more mindful of how we uh, communicate with the others, how we express our feelings of um, just love and affection, and let's make the world a better place in, two, uh, in 2021. But think about those gifts. Maybe it's not worth all that money and time that you spend uh, wrap, looking for them, wrapping them up and uh, sending them. I know it's culture. It's probably expected that you would. But what can we do about it? All right, guys. I'll be back tomorrow again. I'll say bye-bye. Thank you for listening. Ata.